from a health standpoint, should we try to add oil such as flax, hemp, and olive oil to our diets, or should we try to avoid it? If we do use it, should we avoid heating it up? Yeah. So our recommendations are to avoid oils uh, at all costs. We haven't looked at any studies saying, okay, we have a whole food plant-based diet, no oil, whole food plant-based diet with oil. Um, you know, what difference is show? I, I, I want to do that study to, to really, so, you know, we recommend no oil and that, I think that's the right answer. Um, we, um, we have to do the investigation because I don't want to just empirically say no oils. I think the right answer is no oils, but there are a lot of variables there. I mean, if you're getting a truly cold pressed oil and it's not rancid, you know, does it cause harm? Um, I think it does because one, you can't really control for that. So maybe if you had the perfect oil in the world, maybe you can get away with that. But the, the, uh, the two reasons I don't recommend the oils, one, I think the oils inherently are problematic. That's, that's what I think. Um, and, and even the raw oils. Now, I don't think we have a lot of data on just the purest, purest raw oil, but I still think the purest of pure raw oils are problematic. That's one. Two, even if the purest of the pure oil was problematic, and you say, okay, you can have the purest of the pure oil, but the other oils you can't have, then people will extrapolate and say, well, he said I can have oil. And all the, 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 the oil, you know, uh, um, you know, commentary and, 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 and the like will be forgotten. And the only thing they're going to hear is oil. So they'll be frying their, you know, you know, okra and oil, uh, cook a salt in it, and that's all cooked oils. You shouldn't have a cooked oil. So that's why we just say no oil. But I, I think someone needs to do a study where you have the, the purest of the pure oil that you add to a diet that has no oil, but it's defined plant-based you know, 100% raw cooked, both of them. And that's the only difference is the oil and see if you can measure a difference there. And then you'll have, get some information as to where it's that pure, so pure oil, whatever that definition would be. How do we help poor people who are growing up in areas that serve mostly unhealthy food? Well, what I do with my patients who are in that situation, I tell them to stop eating the bad food. I mean, you know, um, the, I don't care where people are, they're going to do the right thing, uh, as best they can. And, um, I've had a lot of patients who were on food stamp or welfare. We're trying to get our, our nutrition center. We have a restaurant on site nutrition center. We're getting it certified for food stamps here in Texas. Uh, but an, an individual coming to the food say, look, when are you going to get your food stamps? You know, you know, we want to come in and spend our food stamps here. Um, people who want to do the right thing will do the right thing, regardless of their economic, socioeconomic status. And if they're in my office and they don't want to do the right thing at first, then they're going to hear me badger them until <laughs> they do the right thing. And if they keep coming back, that tells me they keep wanting to hear me badger them because, you know, they, they want to do the right thing, either sub, whether subconscious or not. And, and what I do is I take away all the excuses. I've had patients who, you know, they're on fixed income. I've had a homeless lady on plant-based diet. I had several homeless people. One lady was homeless and she came and did a detox program. And, you know, we spotted her some food here and there. But once she started, she was depressed on antidepressants. She got so much better uh, after that. We weaned her off antidepressants and so on. Uh, so, you know, people have the will to do the right thing. And, and, and if somebody is in a poor neighborhood, they need to eat a, a, a healthy diet more than somebody who's in a rich neighborhood. Now, that's kind of an overstatement. But, you know, when everything's against you, you need to start to fortify yourself from within. And so that that's the population, the people that I work with. Uh, and I work with every socioeconomic status and and individuals in that situation. I say, look, here's what you do. Uh, you lo learn how to grow something in a pot. You learn how to go to this store, this store. You go to supermarkets and you negotiate. I've had patients, I had an elderly lady on, you know, she says, look, I can't, we, I, she had bad rheumatoid arthritis. Her, you know, fingers are all the, 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 the form and, and old frail lady. And, and so she wanted to do a smoothie detox. She said, well, I can't afford just smoothies. I said, what do you mean you can't afford our smoothies? Have you tried to negotiate the price? What's your budget? You know, give me a number. And I got my nutritional manager and said, look, here's her budget for the week. I want you to calculate something where we make a profit and, and she, we make her budget. 
And we did that. And the lady, she detoxed. She went from, you know, using a walker to carrying heavy smoothies out and walking out and detoxing. So what I tell them to do is that don't put barriers on yourself. I don't care where you are, sleeping on the streets or what. Figure something out. If you don't have resources, be resourceful. And, and I teach them to go to the supermarkets and negotiate. I write them a prescription, raw fruits and vegetables for heart disease. And I say, you go take this to the produce manager and say, look, I've got a bad heart disease. My doctor said I've got to eat raw fruits and vegetables. I only have $5 a week. And then I tell them if their budget is $15, tell them the budget is $5. And then tell them to get all the fruits and vegetables, $5. And if they get their supply, they got $10 saved over. Put that in the stock market or something, whatever. The point is simply this. Uh, you just have to be resourceful. And what I do is I, I encourage them, I motivate them because that's essentially what people need. I don't know what their situation is, but I do know if they're, they're, if they're down and out, you start with here. And I start with here for my patients. I say, look, you know, you're going to do that. You have to do this. So you're going to do this. So once you make up in your mind, you're going to do it. Then the rest becomes process. Okay. So I get them to make up in their mind. They want to do it. Once they make up the mind, they're going to do it. Then we figure out what the process is, whatever the circumstances uh, dictate. What's wrong with cheese? Don't we need calcium? Well, calcium is in a lot of plant foods, seeds, uh, sunflower seeds have a lot of calcium, a lot of greens have calcium. Uh, cheese have a lot of bad fats, uh, casein, protein, triggers inflammation. So, uh, you know, especially, you know, cow's cheese and, you know, dead animal flesh forms of cheese. So, so you can, you can get calcium by many means other than just eating, you know, cheese from an animal protein milk. Is chicken and fish healthier than beef and pork? Uh, no, not in my, not based, not on my estimation. There, there are bad aspects to both chicken and fish. Uh, you know, there's some, you can look at some aspects of red meat. So, okay, red meat has more of this in it, which is a toxin than chicken and fish. And so based on that parameter, it's, it's worse, but it, it's sort of like saying, well, you know, the, the, you know, the sprinter is faster than the hundred yard dash, but the, the big, you know, shot put it can throw the shot put farther than the sprinter. So, I mean, who's the better athlete? I don't know. They both do something different. That's better than the other. Uh, these, you know, red meat does something, you know, bad to you better than the chicken does, but the chicken has something bad, better than the red meat. So you just got to avoid it all. <laughs> 